Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Today we're going to look at service conductors over roofs. And if you can't make out what's in this picture on the right, it's actually a mobile home. And the picture doesn't really do it justice. Those conductors are only about two and a half to three feet above that mobile home. And the question is, is this too low? And is this the utilities problem or is this an NEC problem? Well, depending on where your utility says the point of service is, that's where the NEC technically starts. So let's say your power company says at the weatherhead is the point of service, so the NEC would be from that point down. But one thing I never want you to lose sight of is you're always going to need to do an NEC compliant installation. And let me explain what I mean. Yes, those conductors may be under the exclusive control of the utility, but your inspector is using the NEC as the yardstick. So even if the power company says it's okay, that inspector can still say, I don't care, I'm the inspector. So it also has to be approved by the inspector. So I want you to treat all installations as an NEC installation, whether it's on the utility side or not. And the reason is, I know that the utility is likely going to be NEC or greater. Plus, your inspector is just not going to prove it unless it's NEC compliant. So, just imagine, for with me for just one moment, that this is an NEC installation and it is your problem. And in my opinion, it is. So, we're going to find the answer to this problem in 230.24. When we get to 230.24, and I'm going to read from the 2020 because nothing has changed until we get to the 2023, and I'll cover that in just a moment. So if you haven't spent just a few minutes in 230.24, it's going to answer a ton of your questions. And specifically, 230, I love the article. It's all about services. If you have a question about services, it's likely in 230. So when we get to 230.24, it's talking about clearance of these overhead service conductors. And we're going to find the specific answer that we're talking about today in Part A. And it's talking about above roofs. It says service conductors shall not be readily accessible and they shall comply with Parts 230.24A through E. When we get to A, it says those conductors shall have a vertical clearance of not less than 8 feet above the roof's surface. And that clearance must be maintained for at least three feet. And we're not going to get into that part of the code of the day. I just want to talk to you about that height. So above this whole mobile home, these conductors must have a clearance of at least eight feet. And that's part of why we got brought to this job was to fix this problem. And that's one of the biggest things that we're going to be doing, among other things that we're fixing in this situation. But with that being said, there are some exceptions beneath this code that you have to watch out for. A lot of times in the code, when we find an exception down beneath, it's in our favor, isn't it? Hey, it makes it a little less stringent if you're in this certain you know, circumstance. But the first exception actually amplifies it. And this is something I really need you to pay attention to. So yes, the NEC says the minimum is eight feet, but that's if you just pass over the roof. This exception goes on to say that if that roof is accessible to pedestrians, then you have to meet the, the clearance requirements that are listed in 230.24b. And for pedestrian access, the minimum would be 10 feet. So that's actually two more feet than the minimum requirement. So if it, this roof has access to pedestrians, it would be a minimum of 10 feet. Then it goes on to say if it has vehicular traffic, that you would have to raise it up to the next level. And that would be a minimum of 12 feet. So if we have vehicular traffic and it's not subject to truck traffic, in my opinion, it would be 12 feet. Then if you go on and you have vehicular traffic and it is subject to truck traffic, those conductors would have to be 18 feet above that roof level. So let's say you had a business down below, parking garage up top, that's technically the roof, people pull up onto the parking garage. If it meets any of the three points, meaning it has pedestrians can access it, or it has vehicular traffic without truck vehicular traffic without truck traffic and vehicular traffic with traffic, you're going to have to meet either 10 foot, 12 foot or 18 foot respectively. So to recap for today, you have to have a minimum of eight feet above a roof. If there's pedestrians, you have to have a minimum of 10 feet. If there's pedestrians or excuse me, if there's vehicles without truck traffic, you have to have a minimum of 12. 
if there's vehicles with truck traffic, it has to be a minimum of 18. And listen, you need to get all of this blessed by your inspector. So with that being said, I hope that this video added a little bit of value to you and you will in turn add value to others. Before we get off, I want to talk about the change in the 2023. In the 2023, they increased it from eight feet to eight foot six. Now, I don't know the exact reasoning behind this extra six inches, but I've learned one thing in the past. If the code makes a change, there's often a body count because of it or something terrible has happened. Does that make sense? So they've raised it from eight feet to eight foot six in the 2023 and later. So if you're in the 23, you have to bump that up to eight foot six. I am the electrical code coach. And if there's anything I can do to help you in life or business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.